In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. We come together in prayer this morning to God our Father. We ask for his guidance in this very troubled world we live in at the moment. We also pray for a cure or a vaccine to the current coronavirus. In our prayer, we'll ask to remember Father and Duchenne families. Now, as we come to pray, we acknowledge we are sinners. We ask for God's forgiveness and healing. Lord Jesus, you were lifted up to draw all people to yourself. Lord, have mercy. You shouldered the cross to bear our suffering and sinfulness. Christ, have mercy. You opened for your people the way from death into life. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us now pray. O God, the Father of every good gift, we confess that all we have and come and are comes down from you. Teach us to recognize the effects of your boundless care and to love you with a sincere heart and with all our strength, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I have been told as an undoubted fact that one of you is living with his father's wife. This is a case of sexual immorality among you that must be unparalleled even among pagans. How can you be so proud of yourselves? You should be in mourning. A man who does a thing like that ought to be expelled from the community. Though I am far away in body, I am with you in spirit, and have always condemned the man who did this thing as if I were actually present. When you are assembled together in the name of the Lord Jesus, and I am spiritually present with you, then with the power of our Lord Jesus, he is to be handed over to Satan, so that his sensual body may be destroyed and his spirit saved on the day of the Lord. The pride that you take in yourselves is hardly to your credit. You must know how even a small amount of yeast is enough to leaven all the dough. So get rid of all the old yeast and make yourselves into a completely new batch of bread, unleavened as you are meant to be. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Let us celebrate the feast. Then, by getting rid of all the old yeast of evil and wickedness, having only the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth, the word of the Lord. Our response to the psalm. Lead me in your justice, Lord. You are no God who loves evil. No sinner is your guest. The boastful shall not stand their ground before your face. Lead me in your justice, Lord. You hate all who do evil. You destroy all who lie. 
the deceitful and the bloodthirsty man the Lord detests. Lead me in your justice, Lord. All those you protect shall be glad and ring out their joy. You shelter them, in you they rejoice, those who love your name. Our Gospel Acclamation Alleluia, Alleluia My sheep listen to my voice, says the Lord I know them and they follow me, Alleluia The Lord be with you A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke On the Sabbath Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach, and a man was there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees were watching him to see if he would cure a man on the Sabbath, hoping to find something to use against him. But he knew their thoughts, and he said to the man with the withered hand, Stand up, come out into the middle. And he came out and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I put it to you. Is it against the law on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? Then he looked round them all uh, and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He did so and his hand was better. But they were furious and began to discuss the best way of dealing with Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise in our first reading, St. Paul seems very harsh in his judgment. I do suspect that it was a grave source of scandal in the community. But he does make an extremely important point. Paul uses Jesus' powerful action to illustrate how toleration of self-indulgent or abusive habits, even in one person, can influence the integrity of the whole group. As a result, the community can move away from the practice of loving action which is rooted in sincerity and in truth. So it is a call to realise that each of us is called to make a contribution. It's not so much what we say, it's who we are, it's how we live our lives that are very important in all this. In a Gospel reading, Jesus also challenges his audience to consider their motives for action. They need to reflect on God's law of love, which is distinct from blindly applying the established rules of the Sabbath behaviour that forbade acts of healing. The wrong action, Jesus says, would be to do nothing. In curing the sick man, he is performing an intrinsically good action, one that cannot, because it is a loving and caring action, break the Sabbath rule. The tragedy of the Pharisees is their obsession with the fine print of the law, which prevents them from seeing the true importance of the Sabbath. They do not realise that the Sabbath is a celebration of God's love for them. In the Jewish culture, the Sabbath meant to be a time of prayer and celebration, a prayer where we acknowledge that we are God's chosen ones, we are members of God's family, and we rejoice in that fact. But look, before we condemn the Pharisees, let us accept that we all tend to be nitpickers, picking at the faults of others. It is so easy to fail to see the good that people do and all the good that exists within people. We notice their faults, but we forget then that they are God's chosen people just as much as we are God's chosen people. And I wonder whether we actually believe we are each of us chosen by God to live at this moment in history. You know, God wanted them and he wanted us to exist at this time. He brought us all into being out of his infinite love. So the question is, how dare do we 
Are we to criticise God's creation? I think one of the things we can do each day, and particularly on the Sabbath, is to realise and wonder that human beings, all human beings, are made in the image of God and are created by God to be his gift to the world. I think we're being invited to spend some time on decluttering, clear, clearing out old habits, in reflecting on our motives for action in terms of God's law of compassionate love. You know, we too can feast on the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth that will nourish us into new ways of being and strengthen us to be witnesses to God's love, to be witnesses to the wonderful life we have received and be able to go out and share that with others. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our God is a God who saves and who wants to fill us with life. We come in confidence to him with our needs today. We pray for the whole church, that the word that we speak may be a word of life for the many who experience struggle, weariness and emptiness today. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who have lost hope, that they may experience, may experience the enlivening touch of the Spirit of God in their lives. Lord, hear us. We pray for the gift of compassion that in seeing the pain of others we may be moved to help and serve. Lord, hear us. We pray for the courage to do good things for others, especially in the face of pressure to do otherwise. Lord, hear us. We pray for our needs and the needs of all our brothers and sisters. We pray for those affected by the coronavirus and for their families. We pray for those who have died. Lord, hear us. God, our Father, these are the prayers of your children who are beloved to you in your Son. We present them to you in full joy and confidence, and we make our prayer today through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness... We have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Now let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. This oblation, O Lord, which on the altar of the cross cancelled the offences of the whole world, cleanse us, we pray, of all our sins. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray the Eucharistic prayer, Jesus went about doing good. The Lord be with you. Yes. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbour to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed he announced to the world that you are our Father, and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so, with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name, and sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Amen. Amen.
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and unto the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Vincent our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, deacons, the entire people you have made your own. Open your, our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters, inspiring us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, to all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, the Martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At our Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously, peace in our days 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We pray the prayer for those unable to be with us this morning. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us now pray. 
O God, who have given to us a spiritual food, the saving sacrament of your Son, which we have offered to you in thanksgiving, grant that being strengthened by gifts of courage and joy, we may serve you more devotedly and be worthy of still further blessings. This prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify God in your daily lives. Amen.